for the life of me, I don't know why students just sort of forget about this function. We call this cotangent function, here it is more beautifully, x equals zero, x equals pi. Know that that's where the sine function had zeros. That's why they were there. You can do what I do to repeat this. Pi over four comma one, pi over two comma zero, three pi over four comma negative one. You could use your unit circle to repeat this and you can see as x increases, so as x increases, y decreases. That's why we call this a constantly decreasing function. Now, just like our tangent function, this repeatable unit is gonna occur again and again and again. It's gonna look like infinitely many of these. What if I changed my equation to y equals three cotangent x? Well, the only thing that changes, we've got a vertical stretch. So instead of going halfway between intercept and asymptote and up one, we'd go up three. So this would increase to three, and this point would be three here. And this, uh, it's like our amplitude, think of it as the vertical stretch, we'd be going down three. So I can, with a, I can handle a vertical stretch very quickly. Well, all I've done is by changing the numbers from one to three and from negative one to negative three, I've showed that this is now stretching vertically by a factor of three. All of the y's were multiplied by three. Can we handle graphing one cycle where I introduce an A and a B? So I'm modeling this on Y equals A cotangent BX. Now our amplitude here, which is really like our vertical stretch, is two. And a negative means instead of going down, 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 we're going to reflect this over the X axis. So it's actually going to look rather like a tangent function, constantly increasing up, up, up. Our b is 4, and just like the tangent function, the period is not 2 pi over b, but rather just pi over b, which means we're going to be at pi over 4. Well, where are those asymptotes? We know we're going to start at whatever's in parentheses, 4x equals, well, where does the parent function start? You guessed it, 0. And we're going to stop at whatever's in parentheses equals, well, where does the parent function stop? For cotangent, that's pi. Multiply both sides by 1 fourth, we get x equals zero and x equals pi over four. Oh yeah, the four acted to shrink us horizontally by factor of four. So where we used to start at zero and end at pi, we're gonna start at zero and end at pi over four. So if I'm graphing this, I can say my vertical asymptote, my second one, is going to be found at x equals pi over 4. And here is my first one. This is the y-axis here. x equals 0. Halfway between 0 and pi over 4. So half of pi over 4, 1 half times pi over 4 is pi over 8. And remember, I'm going to be going up, up, up. So it's going to look something like this. Now, half. if this is the point pi over eight comma zero. I know I go halfway between intercept and asymptote and up to and halfway between intercept and down to. So I know that this y coordinate will be two and this y coordinate will be negative two. Well, what is our x coordinate? It's halfway between zero and pi over eight. Half of pi over eight is one pi over, sorry, it's down here, one pi over 16. I just did one half times pi over eight. One half of pi over eight is pi over 16. And once I have that, I'm going one pi over 16, two pi over 16. Here is three pi over 16. Three pi over 16 comma two. Now, if you don't like that, take the average of pi over eight and pi over four, and you'll see it's three pi over 16. So I've got three points. What did I say? This is one over, it's really pi over 16. Pi over 16 comma negative two, pi over eight zero, and three pi over two comma two. And I've got asymptotes at zero and pi over four. I've done it. I've graphed my uh, graph. I've got three points and two asymptotes. Our domain, well, it's all real numbers, except x cannot equal, I'll choose this one, zero plus our jump is pi over four, 
pi over 4n, where n is an element of the integers. Look, we're going down to infinity and up to infinity in the y, so our range is all real numbers. Not so hard.